Good afternoon and good morning, everyone, friends and guests. I'm Dr. Axel Seal, the uh, president of the Asian Society for Emergency Medicine. Welcome all to attend this webinar on emergency medicine education in Asia, co-organized by the Asian Society for Emergency Medicine uh, and also the International Emergency Medicine Education Project. I think if you all agree that uh, in order to sustain our specialty, education is something that should not be neglected. So today, it is really our honor to have the invited speakers from different parts in Asia to talk about the education on emergency medicines, both in the aspects related to medical students and also uh, for residents trainee training. And also we have speakers to talk on the, our current challenges and some possible solution on how to promulgate emergency medicine education in Asia. And also we have honor to have the educators uh, also from emergency medicine specialty to talk about how to be uh, educated and those educated issues related to emergency medicines. And uh, we are also finally honored that to have uh, the, the founders and also the director of the International Educate, Emergency Medicine Education Project to talk about, to introduce their project to you. And uh, at the end of this uh, webinar, We'll have a panel discussion. We'll invite all the speakers to discuss on this aspect. And for those all, all the participants, if you want to, want to raise questions, you are welcome to enter your questions in the chat box so that our panel moderators, uh, Dr. Kevin Hong and also Dr. Restam, will know and then they ask the respected uh, speakers. So, without further delay, I would like to introduce the first speakers, Professor. Rama Krishnan, representing the Society of Emergency Medicine India. He was talking something about the emergency medicine educations across Asia with the uh, uh, emphasis on the medical students. He will try to use the approach and the perspective from India to illustrate the EM educations in, uh, for medical students. So welcome, uh, Professor Rama Krishnan. Thank you, uh, Professor Axel, uh, for this wonderful opportunity to share some of my thoughts. Uh, can I share my screen now? Thank you for this wonderful opportunity again. And I'll be talking to you about uh, the emergency medicine education in India uh, with regards to medical students. Uh, the objectives of my talk are to start uh, telling you something about postgraduate education in emergency medicine. And then going on to undergraduate education, where we have a foundation course for the students when they join, and an early clinical exposure uh, towards uh, uh, clinical medicine. And then they again have a posting in the third year with us in emergency medicine, then finally as an intern. Of course, we are a huge country. We have 28 states and eight union territories. We speak almost 122 languages and 216 mother tongues and almost 900 dialects. We are the seventh largest country and the second most populous. So you can uh, understand how difficult it is to get things done in our country. Emergency medicine as a specialty was officially recognized uh, by the Medical Council of India. Uh, in the year July 2009. And the first emergency medicine postgraduate training started uh, in the year 2010. Presently, out of almost 450 medical colleges in our country, we have uh, medical, uh, we have only 58 medical colleges offering 187 seats in emergency medicine. And that is an MD program in emergency medicine, which is the three year course. In addition to this, we have another board, which is called the National Board of Examinations, which is an independent academic board, which has been uh, recognized uh, in the year 2013. And these uh, trainees are usually uh, affiliated to the uh, private hospitals, the big hospitals in our country, where these people can actually train and take exams. Across the country, we have about 76 hospitals, which are offering 167 seats. How were the faculties identified? People with, who are anesthesiologists by training, internal medicine, general surgeons, orthopedic surgeons, respiratory medicine, these were the people who were actually uh, you know, asked to help out uh, uh, to 
start these uh, programs in emergency medicine. I myself am an anesthesiologist by training. And we did start the first emergency medicine department uh, in South India around uh, in the year 2000, actually. So it's almost 22 years. Acceptance of uh, emergency medicine is a specialty by the various departments and clinicians at the hospital for a long time. Everybody thought that we are actually intruding into their territory. There were a lot of uh, problems, you know, communication and things like that. But now things are slowly getting sorted out. Yes, we still have a long way to go and hopefully we will reach the destination very soon. As far as programs that are concerned with uh, postgraduate uh, uh, education, we have the Society for Emergency Medicine in India, which is uh, one of the very important bodies in our country, which is uh, helping uh, popularize uh, both education as training as well as care for patients in emergencies. They have a master's in emergency medicine, which is a three-year program offered by the Society for Emergency Medicine. We have universities coming in from the United States giving a master's in emergency medicine like the George Washington University. We also have the MRKM program by the uh, uh, Council from the United Kingdom. And of course, the last two I had already talked to you earlier, the DNB, the National Board for Emergency Medicine and the MD Emergency Medicine, which is uh, both these are the ones that are recognized by the uh, Council for Medical Education. Giving you a bird's eye view of all the programs that are uh, available in our country for post-graduation, you can see that uh, the ones that are recognized by the Council for Medical Education are the MRKM as an additional degree only, not as a primary degree, the DNB and the uh, MD in emergency medicine. Of course, uh, the, uh, the Society for Emergency Medicine India is doing a great job by you know, uh, popularizing emergency medicine and taking in more and more graduates to train because India is such a huge country with so much of population and there are so many hospitals which are actually unmanned. And uh, the uh, society is doing a wonderful job by uh, doing this um, uh, master's in emergency medicine and bringing in more and more uh, uh, doctors who are trained in taking care of emergencies. This is just a bird's eye view of the postings that these students are put in in our hospital. I just want to show this an example where they spend our, our own, a year in the emergency department with other areas like the multidisciplinary intensive care, cardiology, anesthesiology for one month, etc. This is actually a welcome news uh, uh, by, uh, the, uh, by all Indians, especially in emergency physicians, where the uh, National Medical uh, Commission, which is the governing body for medical education in our country, has made it mandatory that all emergency departments in medical colleges uh, uh, should be functional by the year 2020. As a corollary to this, uh, now I'm going on to uh, undergraduate education, where as soon as the student actually joins, within the first one month, we have something called a foundation course. The duration of the foundation course is always for one month. And this is a mandate from the National Medical Council, where the uh, students actually are for one month at the beginning of the course. And this uh, foundation course is mainly to sensitize the fresh medical students with the required knowledge and skills that will assist them in acclimatizing them to the new uh, environment because they are thrown into the medical college and the hospital and some of them do take time, uh, you know. Uh, so this will actually help them to get acclimatized. What we actually tell them is uh, something about the MBBS program that is a four and a half plus one, it's a five and a half year program where, where things on med medical ethics, attitude, professionalism, uh, the health uh, priorities and policies of the government of India, uh, a few uh, you know, sessions on universal precautions, vaccinations, and patient safety and biohazard safety. All these are uh, taught to them uh, in the first month of the course when they join. Other important things that are identified are interpersonal relationships, communication, which is extremely important, especially for our uh, specialty, stress management, use of information technology, and of course, the most popular ones are the ones on classes on first day and basic life These are the skills module that are actually taught uh, to the students in the first month when they join an MBBS program. It, the, 
our um, program is called an MBBS, a Bachelor's of Medicine and Bachelor's of Surgery, where the skill module consists of basic life support, first aid, universal precautions, and biomedical waste and safety management. And these are the competencies that have actually been uh, uh, identified uh, where they need to. Now, uh, the uh, National Medical Commission has actually mandated that we should have a competency-based medical education. And these are some of the competencies that students are supposed to have, like perform basic life support in a skill, uh, skills lab in a simulated environment, perform a stay, and follow the biosafety universal precautions and safe disposal of uh, biohazardous materials. These are some of the other competencies, how to use uh, uh, PPE, because it's very, very important because of the uh, number of infectious diseases that are going around all over the world. So uh, a class on how to wear the proper PPE and what sort of PPE you use and when do you use it is also. So this is just a plan that we have formulated, for example, for uh, basic life support. We have an introduction and then we have a demonstration of the appropriate videos. We have a total of 75 students that are taken in a batch and we do small group uh, uh, sessions after the uh, theory sessions is over. We take them into five groups of 15 each where they actually uh, practice on mannequins. And after that is done, the feedback from the students is taken and uh, guidance for future learning is made. This is another uh, session that is uh, done on first aid, basically. Uh, 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 life threatening emergencies like uh, you know, breathing problems, choking, allergic reactions. It's not done in great detail, but just to tell them how important it is for us to recognize these emergencies and what we need to achieve. As usual, we do get a feedback from the students. We break them into smaller groups where they teach them how to splint a fracture and how to, suppose it is bleeding, how to give a compression bandage for your works, things like that. There is another uh, aspect of it, which is called an early clinical exposure. Now, this starts six months after admission to the college. The foundation course is the first month when they join the college, where they have some idea about what they're going to encounter in the four and a half years of study and one year as a uh, working in the hospital as a uh, intern. Now this early clinical exposure starts six months after admission to college. And this facilitates early involvement in the healthcare environment. So basically we are trying to integrate the basic sciences along with the uh, clinical material that we have in the hospital so that it's a sort of a vertical and a horizontal integration that actually happens. So this actually provides a context that will enhance your basic science learning. And it will also combine whatever the person is reading in basic sciences in diagnosing and patient care and treatment. This actually motivates the students to actually learn and they become much better. At the same time, we also recognize and teach them what is the proper attitude and ethics that they need to have to be kind to patients, to listen to patients, to be uh, get permission from patients to introduce yourself, things like that, professionalism, and to uh, as a talk to patient. So all these things are also taught uh, uh, to the students during the early clinical exposure. I remember they are just six months into their program. They come to us for four weeks in the emergency department. So I thought I will just uh, show you what we actually deal. Uh, the international patient safety goals are extremely important. I didn't think the color, correct patient, the uh, name and the unique uh, uh, ID number, uh, take care of prevent infections, prevent falls. So all those important things about uh, uh, patient care and safety is taught to them. How do we triage patients? What do we do when there's an accident or a poisoning? What are the medical legal uh, 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 formalities that we need to do? Uh, just to give them an idea of what actually happens in the emergency department. The second week, we actually uh, teach them basic life support. What they have learned in the first month, we again reiterate and we uh, teach them again basic life support, CPR techniques, how to use an AED, what happens when somebody is choking. We also teach them what is the crash card, what are the things inside the crash card, how to use a crash card, and things like that. Uh, basics about the defibrillator blood gas analysis. So this is the crash card that we actually have, which we open and we actually show them what are the drugs and what are the instruments and airway equipment, everything that's available in a crash card. 
so that this is just to again to create an awareness to the medical student as to what are the facilities available and what they can do when uh, somebody uh, is very sick. The third week we uh, uh, teach them basics of uh, ECG, blood gases, how to interpret uh, chest X-ray or uh, a CT of the brain with an idiot. We just show them these are the images and this is how you during the fourth week, we teach them uh, common emergencies, stroke, acute pulmonary syndrome, burns, poisoning. We do get a lot of poisoning, public overdose, snake bites are also quite common in our country. So just to give them a, a fleeting glimpse of the cases that they can encounter uh, further on. Now, this is within the first six months, they get uh, um, exposure to emergency medicine. And then when they come into the third year, they are posted in the emergency department for two years. They again revisit the skills that they get exposed to in the first year. For example, uh, basic life support again, use of an AED, and uh, uh, how to interpret an ECG. Uh, suppose we have taught them how to put a defibrillator in the first six months uh, during the early clinical exposure. We will tell them what are the steps of defibrillation now and what are the uh, um, ECG rhythms that can be defibrillated, etc. And a structured assessment is done now. They have a log book. And we again reiterate attitude, ethics, and communication, which is an ed or module that they actually go through in the university, where case scenarios are given to the uh, to the students, and they and, uh, they actually uh, role play is done, uh, how to break bad news to the uh, patient, and how do I uh, you know uh, counsel patients uh, regarding the care, etc., patient privacy. So all these are done in the ad hoc. Now, these are some of the uh, uh, competencies that can actually be assessed by the uh, consultants who are there. Uh, so this is the one that we do. The, the competency to be assessed is to demonstrate the maintenance of an airway in a mannequin or equivalent. If it's, uh, F is only the first time he's doing it, or is he repeating it now, or he's not done it properly and it needs to be uh, remedial. So this is how the uh, competency is actually addressed. And finally, the feedback is received uh, from the learner. This is uh, how to perform uh, or interpret an ECG. That is another competency that the student must actually be doing uh, during the third year of uh, 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 posting with us in the emergency department. Finally, when he becomes an intern, that is, uh, he finishes four and a half years of study and then becomes an intern, then these are the list of uh, uh, things that he should either perform or assist in like identification of acute emergencies or managing an acute community, or he could assist the emergency physician when that is actually happening, management of hyperpyrexia or drowsy or drowning, poisoning, seizure. So obviously they will not be uh, able to do it independently, but they can assist and they can actually see and learn as to how the emergency physician is actually functioning in the department taking care of these emergencies. These are some of the procedures that they have to be certified in. So because now it's become a competency-based curriculum. For example, a vent puncture, I means he has to do it independently. O means he has to observe. And D means he can demonstrate or uh, you know, uh, not on a patient, but on a mannequin, he could actually do it. So this is how we have actually divided it. Or you could help uh, uh, assist uh, somebody when it's being done. For example, he should be able to uh, independently do a peripheral blood smear interpretation or nebulize a patient or set up an IV infusion. All these things they can actually do it independently. So these are some of the competencies that the student must complete, which is certified. Only then he would be able to complete them. This is actually, uh, we uh, did a study uh, where uh, we uh, actually looked at uh, for these medical students, where we had uh, two groups of students, and we have this uh, ladle mannequin with us, which gives a feedback actually. So uh, we used a feedback mannequin and we made medical students learn basic life support on the mannequin, and we found that the uh, interpret uh, the, the students were able to identify their mistakes much better. The second uh, study that we did was a video assisted self assessment basic life support skills in medical students where a video was actually we had two groups uh, in which we had uh, the people who were assessing using this checklist. Uh, along with it, a video was taken when the student was actually performing basic life support and the students uh, actually felt that uh, um, 
rather than only having a checklist with the assessor telling you what went wrong if they see the video themselves they will be able to identify more mistakes so what is the future of uh, emergency medicine uh, education in the country obviously we need to develop specialty residency training like in pediatric emergency medicine ultrasound uh, uh, disaster medicine we need to create uh, accreditation guidelines for our residents we have to promote academic awareness for best practice models for emergency care standardizing uh, emergency and pre hospital care all over the country and the most important thing is to foster academic research in emergency medicine thank you professor axel again for this wonderful opportunity and i end my talk thank you sir thank you everyone well uh, thank you uh, professor rama krishnan for this uh, very informative uh, descriptions on the uh, EM education uh, for medical students and those uh, will be expected from the uh, India uh, with the point. And uh, for those uh, uh, participants who have just joined up, uh, if you have any questions to this presentation, please leave it on the chat box and we will um, uh, uh, leave the questions, the Q&A session to the final part of the panel discussions.